Good morning and welcome to today's Coffee with Craig. It is Friday and it is a gloomy day here in Sacramento. Well, I mean, about as gloomy as it has been. You know, you get used to nice 70, 80 degree weather and then all of a sudden it decides it's going to turn cloudy. Ha. Huh. Such is life in politics as I have come to accept here in the great state of California. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about, uh, well, something that our attorney general uh, participated in with a number of other uh, Democrat attorney generals. Uh, there was a news story that came out noting that uh, Democratic state attorney generals came out against uh, concealed carry reciprocity. Uh, I, I, once again, I find it interesting that the people who are deemed with uh, protecting uh, protecting us citizens, protecting the law abiding would come out against a law that allows law abiding citizens to be able to defend themselves. I in particularly find it interesting that uh, that the attorney general in the state of California, uh, where we have seen crime and violent crime go up over the last three years because, oh, I don't know, his colleagues decided to let criminals out of jail. Uh, but we've, we've had an opportunity to see crime go up, and yet he is against the idea of individuals being able to uh, defend themselves or exercise their right to keep and bear arms in self-defense. Uh, in this statement that was released uh, by, by this individual, actually it was a number of attorneys general, uh, the main ones, including main ones including New York, Pennsylvania, Iowa, and California, they sent a letter to Congress uh, asking them to basically kill national reciprocity. Uh, one of the things that they noted in their letter was it said that uh, top prosecutor, or in this, at least in the story, it says that pro top prosecutors from states including New York, Pennsylvania, Iowa, and California sent a letter to congressional leaders in both parties on Sunday, warning that federal reciprocity proposals being debated on Capitol Hill will lead to the death of police officers and civilians, the proliferation of gun traffickers, and acts of terrorism, and other mass violence. Okay. I'm not sure that these individuals know or understand exactly what concealed carry reciprocity is, or at least what it's supposed to be. Last I checked, uh, there have been absolutely no incidents, at least here in California, uh, of mass shootings by concealed carry permit holders. At least, once again, at least not here in California. I'm just trying to figure out exactly how concealed carry permits lead to mass violence. I'm trying to figure out exactly how it leads to uh, poli uh, police officers, police officer deaths. I mean, if this is not fear-mongering at its best, I don't know what is. I mean, the fact is, is that if you look at these individuals, it's not like they really know or understand how to keep individuals safe, especially here in the state of California. Once again, where we've seen uh, an increase in crime after 20 years of, of reduction in violent crime, we've actually seen an increase in violent crime uh, under Attorney General Javier Becerra. Oh, but... He's not to be outdone by the Attorney General of New York, Mr. Eric uh, Schinderman, who states, with the worst shooting in American history fresh in our memory, we urge you and your colleagues to reject these ill-conceived bills. Uh, once again, that was written by Eric Schinderman. So once again, now, last I checked, and I looked and looked like, you know, I've read stories about what happened in Vegas. I don't understand what concealed carry permit or concealed carry reciprocity had to do at all with what occurred in Las Vegas. I mean, the reality is here, these folks are, I mean, these are the worst of the worst. These are the very same people that go after, uh, that go after uh, municipalities if they don't, if they don't capitulate to their social engineering agendas, right? They're the, these are the same folks that go after business owners if the counter in their business is one or two inches too high or too low. These are the people who spend their entire terms in office going after law-abiding citizens, and yet they want to tell Congress how to keep us safe. It is beyond a joke. And by the way, for those of you, you know, in states that think, oh, yeah, well, hey, 
I'm good, you know, at least I know my attorney general wouldn't participate in something like that because I live in a state that actually respects the Second Amendment. But let's be clear, there were a number of other states included in this letter, a number of other attorney generals in states that actually are shall issue states. States like Oregon, Virginia, uh, Illinois, uh, New Mexico, uh, North Carolina. Those are all those are all uh, uh, those are all shall issue states, right? And yet, and still, you have individuals who live in those states. You live in that state. You have the right to keep, you have the right to bear arms in your state, and your attorney general does not believe that you should have the right to bear arms when you leave your state. They believe that your civil rights end at your state's border. That's your attorney general, and those are in safe states, folks. I cannot begin to tell you enough that it is vital and it is important to understand exactly, once again, who these folks are. Uh, these are folks, once again, who do not believe in public safety. Uh, they believe in social engineering and using, using their positions as, 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 as uh, officers within public safety uh, uh, to basically uh, make you, turn you into a victim. That's that may I don't know if that is necessarily their goal, but that is the outcome of their policies. And one only need look to the leader right here in California to understand that that is exactly what is going to happen. Folks, thank you once again for tuning in. This has been Coffee with Craig. You folks have a good weekend and we'll see you real soon. If you like our videos, follow subscribe, like, and share.